Hi, I'm Tim with Ball Bee Company, and I'm gonna show you how I make honey at home. So sit down, maybe grab a nice jar of honey, relax, and I'll tell you how it's all done. One of the questions I get asked almost daily is how do you go from this active colony, maybe living in your roof or under your shed, to a nice jar or a nice bottle of honey that you can consume and eat? Well, this video will help show you how. And a lot of people say, can I keep bees at my house? Well, of course there's bees everywhere, so there's probably already some bees there. But one of the most important things you can do is look up your local ordinances to see if you too can legally have honeybees on your property. Most ordinances will allow it. Now, how many hives can you have on each property? Well, I usually have between one to 12 beehives here on my acre and a half property, but that can fluctuate depending on where I want the bees to be and what nectar source is available. So let me take you to my beehives and I'll show you how they look. One of the first things you're gonna to need to do is get your bee suit on. Now this is my backup bee suit. I don't like how close this screen is to my face, but my main suit that has a wider brim hat, the screen has actually cracked because it's like a fiberglass window screen. So the first thing we need to do is light our smoker. Now this is just a Man Lake Deluxe smoker here. And you can see that I've also added a piece of hardware cloth, uh, eighth inch screening to the cone here so that it kind of helps to eliminate any stray sparks, especially in this area, it gets really dry. So I just take some cardboard strips. Anybody who has Amazon Prime has probably got plenty of these, as we do. And I generally take off or remove the, the tape because I don't want that in there. So what I'll do is I'll take about five or six strips without the tape. And I always wanna make sure that the holes of the cardboard are going in the same direction because I'm gonna roll it in that direction. And it's my thought that those holes also help to channel the heat up through the cardboard. So I'm gonna take my TS-4000 propane torch and I'm gonna just heat up the charcoal that's already in the smoker. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this down in there, leave it for another moment, kind of pump it a little bit. Get some of that heat coming up through there. Now, what about other protective wear? What else do I need? Well. I just use thin nitrile gloves. In fact, um, generally, generally I'll use a little bit heavier gloves, um, but these thin ones work okay too. The bees don't usually want to sting your hands, so these are fine. When I do cutouts though, then I wanna use a heavier glove, but I still stick to the nitrile gloves because then I can uh, clean them and change them out as needed if they get nicked or cut. So let's go to the beehives. First thing I want to do when I get to the beehive is give them a little gentle puff of smoke here. Now we're not going to go through all these right now. In fact, I've already been through and fed them today, but I do want to give smoke to the other nearby colonies just a little bit at the entrances so they don't become agitated. What the smoke does is it will cover the pheromone that the bees produce, which is a warning pheromone. And to some, it smells like ripe bananas. What it also does is it tells the bees that there's a fire as smoke do, would do and it tells them we got to go with as much honey as we can because we might need to leave because there's a fire coming and we want to take those stores with us. So they're inside right now going through the honey and they're lapping it up, filling up their honey stomach. And uh, as some have stated that a full, a bee that's full of honey can't sting. However, I've tested that theory and it's been proven to be false. So that should be enough time. Let's maybe give another little puff at the front. Their main entrance is at the front this bottom board has a little opening back here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one open. Let's see what we can find. Ah, they are working away at that substitute, the pollen substitute that I put in there. Okay, so generally you wanna take out the side frame if you have a 10 frame deep box. Um, this is the super on top of a 10 frame deep box. It's a six and five eighths medium. And you can see that uh, I've taken out the side frame. There's nothing in this. There's maybe one or two cells that has a little bit of honey, um, but that is uh, means that they probably need to get a little bit more uh, sugar syrup on them to survive the winter well. There we go. Here's a foundationless frame that they've built some wax out on. 
and they are not filled at all. So this uh, hive has been fed at least two gallons of syrup uh, this year, so probably use another two to four uh, gallons. There we go, you can see a nice amount of stores in there. So this is food. A lot of it's been mixed with sugar syrup, so this is bees food. It wouldn't be something that we would consume. And you can see how clear it is on the hive tool there. And we don't have to worry about this wax. The bees will fix it right away. We'll just go ahead and leave that on there so that they can lap that syrup up and keep filling up these cells. A little bit of capped honey on there. And that is good because it won't absorb any moisture in the winter and when it starts to rain. So they want to get, we want them to get all that capped up before it starts raining. So that's why it's important to feed the bees early. Feed the bees early so that they have, so they can cap all that up. There we go. That's a heavy frame. And that's why, because it's mostly filled and even partially capped. So we're gonna go ahead and put these back down. And I'll show you what I do with these frames after uh, they're filled. Now, typically on a beehive, um, we're gonna leave a good amount of honey for them to survive the winter. Honey is their food. Pollen is their food. If they don't have honey, they cannot heat their hive and they freeze. They get chilled and they can't survive. So we wanna leave lots of honey on there with them, even if it's just sugar, cane sugar, white cane sugar mixed with water. Bees generally keep their hive about 95, 98 degrees. And that might seem kind of warm, but think about our blood temperature. That's how warm we are. So they wanna keep that hive nice and warm so that the brood can develop. And uh, so we're gonna put the lid back on, in fact, right now. It's, uh, it's been a warm week, but still we wanna make sure they can keep that hive nice and warm. Because bees, they can heat their hive, but it takes honey. They can always cool it down with water, but they're gonna deplete that honey as they heat it up. So we're gonna go ahead and close that up and we'll go back into the uh, garage, honey room, whatever you wanna call it. And I'll show you how we do the honey. In fact, that might be another day. So now what you're gonna see is when I did a honey extraction here in my garage just a few months ago with my son, he was the photographer. So I hope you enjoy it. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll be sure to respond. So we're just clearing some of the cappings off the honey and then we'll spit out the honey so we can send it your way. And that's how we do that. If there's anything left, there's a capping scratcher. Just poke those there. And now it's ready to go into the extractor, which is here. It's all sanitized, ready to go. Put it right in there. And we'll spit it out and we'll see you in a second. Go ahead and spin the extractor and fling out some honey. I can see it coming out already. So we'll just spin this for a few moments. Right, so we're going to go ahead and open up the gate and see if we have any honey. Yeah, we do. Come on closer. Take a look at that. That's 2020 fall summer honey right there. I would imagine a lot of this is toyon, some wildflower, uh, maybe some coyote brush, telegraph weed. Um, so this is a nice rich blend of Central Coast San Luis Obispo wildflower honey. So if you order three jars, I'll go ahead and ship them for free. Check out our website, www.ballbeeco.com. That's B-A-L-L-B-E-E-C-O.com. And I'm happy to ship in any orders um, with a three jar minimum. If you live closer, we might be able to work something out. So go ahead and ship me an email. Well, that's how we jar up some honey, and get it ready to uh, enjoy on some biscuits or some toast. And you too could also have honeybees at your house. In the next video, I'm gonna tell you when is the best time of year to get honeybees. You might be surprised. All right, girls. Let's have a really nice day today, okay? I'll take you to a really nice place where nobody will bother you.